Welcome to Around BCC. I'm Keith Tebow and Happy New Year. Students and faculty at Bristol Community College are on their semester break and the spring 2011 semester officially gets underway on January 25th. Our top story this month, Bristol Community College students play a big role on how the school is governed and that uh, happens primarily through the Student Senate. There are student, new student senators each year and we're going to introduce you today to some of the new members of the, and one returning member of the 2010-2011 BCC Student Senate. With me to my immediate left is Nicole Collins. She is the president of the Student Senate. Next to Nicole is Tamara Bryant. You're the secretary, correct, Tamara? Yes. Okay. Then we have uh, Hunter Parent Wetmore, who is in charge of PR. PR, and I'm the Attleboro representative for the school. Attleboro representative. And the returning member of the Senate this year is Jillian Bizdula. Jillian, thank you. And thank you all for joining us today. Thank you, Pat. Nicole, let me start with you as the, uh, as the president. And I'll ask all of you this question, but I'll start with Nicole. Um, what interested you about being a student senator? Why did you want to get involved with student government here at BCC? Um, some of the reasons, like, I've, I just started here in January, and I've been working around with a lot of clubs starting this semester. Um, one of the things that really made me want to be a student leader was as I worked as an orientation leader this past summer. Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of a small but, you know, good leadership role, and I kind of wanted to expand it a little bit and do more, um, play a bigger leadership role here on campus. Now, Tamara, let me ask you, you, you're actually not from Massachusetts. We talked earlier, yeah. you're from the Midwest, from Wisconsin. Yes. Um, so what interested you about being a student leader here? Were you a student leader at all in high school or any other? Um, the only thing I was involved in was FFA and 4-H. That's our closest that we have. We have student council, but it's not as big because it's some small town country girl and we don't have, not like here. Mm -hmm. um, but what interested me here in Massachusetts is um, I came back, I graduated last year, I came back, and I seen, I, I know some other members from last semester, um, and they were in Student Senate, and I seen what they've done and how they, what goals and things that they got accomplished and things they got to be involved in, and I wanted to make a difference out here because I wanted to have something in this area because here nobody knows really what FFA and 4-H is, right. so, and, but everybody knows what student senate is, mm -hmm. the majority of the people. Right. So I wanted to make a difference out here and have something to start my generation or my new life here in Massachusetts. All right, Hunter, let me ask you, um, this is your first year again on the Senate. I know you were returning as well. I'm sorry, there are two returning senators. I, I messed up. There's two returning senators. <laughs> so Hunter, what, what, what um, interested you about joining at, the, at, at first and obviously running and being elected this year? Well, I started off at BCC when I was 15 as an early enrollment student, bumped oh, over to the uh, dual enrollment po program. So I've always tried to, you know, strive to be as involved in my school as possible. When I was younger, um, I was homeschooled, but I was part of the Boy Scouts of America. So when I got to BCC, I was like, I really want to get involved here, and I started getting involved um, in the tutor club. I did, you know, student instructor groups for anatomy and physiology. I, you know, I'm highly involved in tutor club, and I really wanted to, you know, make a change at the school, make a difference, and um, I thought the best way to do that would be as part of the student senate. So I was always friends with the old Attleboro uh, student senator, Sarah Santos, who was absolutely fantastic, but when she had to step down, um, I just took, I was appointed that role by um, the dean of the Attleboro campus, and I've just run with them, the PR rep for this uh, campus at this point, uh, sorry, not for the uh, Student Senate. So I'm redesigning the Facebook page, everything like that. And I'm also the uh, representative for the Attleboro campus. So I'm attempting to address the needs and concerns of students over at the Attleboro campus, um, especially in regards to having a holiday party and beginning a uh, Gay Street Alliance on the Attleboro campus. Oh, cool. cool. Now, Jillian, you were also appointed last year to fill a vacant seat. Is that correct? Yes. Now, what interests you about being involved, and I guess what what's how do you hope what do you hope to get out of being a student senator? Well, I've always growing up, you know, it, it's been a challenge for me being disabled. Um, you know, I know what it's like not to have your voice heard, and so you know, with many challenges that I've had to overcome here at Bristol Community College in terms of accessibility and getting my voice heard, I thought that it, I could play a role in helping other students who may not have a strong voice like myself to speak up and ask for help. So I thought that, you know, by me getting involved 
in the Student Senate, I could play a role in helping others. And have you been able to do that? I mean, just yes. especially maybe with those who, who are disabled and, and have, have um, accessibility issues. Is that, is that yes, been able to Yes, actually, do? Um, thanks to me speaking up a little bit, um, new elevators have come about in, in certain buildings here. Um, they're working on making the buildings more adaptable. Um, they added more accessible buttons. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm hoping that I can continue to lend my voice and a helping hand. Okay. Let me get back to Nicole as, as the president. Um, the Student Senate, um, because it's a BCC is a commuter school and also you know community college, students don't don't stay here that long. There's a lot of turnover every year, and and you're you're new to the to the Senate. Um, what's been some of the, the 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 learning process of of figuring out how the college works and how the Senate plays a role in that? How have you adjusted to that? Um, I think. It's hard because we have a lot of students here on campus and I think well one of the things that we're trying to address is we only have that two years and unfortunately a lot of times by the time students by the time students figure out what opportunities they have here on campus it's almost too late or they're in like the last stages um, so I think one of the things that one of my goals of coming onto the Senate and one of the goals of the Senate this year is to really get students to know what kind of opportunities they have here um, trying to get more students involved in doing stuff outside of the classroom, make mm -hmm. their experience more memorable. Um, students that are involved in stuff tend to do better in schools. So I think probably just trying to get it out there what we have. We're trying to reach all different types of students. Um, like right now we're trying to reach an international club because they don't know what's going on and they don't know what type of activities we have on here for them. So I think that's kind of the role is just trying to get students aware of what we have to offer here. The Senate also works closely with uh, clubs on campus. Um, you, the, the Senate usually provides some seed money every year. Is that the case again this year, Nicole? Um, yep, actually a couple of meetings, one of our first meetings we actually did vote on to it. Um, we've now, I think, rec officially recognized 13 or 14 clubs um, that have actually come forward and they are now all eligible to go to seed money. Seed money. Um, and then in the future, more clubs that come in finish all their paperwork and everything, they can come and actually get that seed money too. Now how, how important is it for uh, this Senate, and I don't know whether you've had this discussion or not, uh, on, on how this Senate uh, plans to interact with administration? Uh, I mean obviously um, you fall under, um, I believe, student engagement and, and, and civic engagement here on campus, but how, um, how, how do you see the, the Senate taking the needs of students and you know addressing those to administration? Um, I think it's it's kind of hard because we do, we do have a certain role and most of our role has to do with activities but um, we are offered we are there for students that do maybe are um, have some problems that they want to address they can actually come to us and talk about it um, and as though we don't really have the power to make any um, official changes right. um, we're always there to, you know, if we're on their side to maybe just lend them, you know, that type of support. So I think that's probably that's the best that we're trying to do right now is give students that support when they're trying to accomplish certain things. Hunter, let me just ask you, um, you're the Attleboro representative and sometimes you've got the New Bedford campus and the Attleboro Center, sometimes they may not feel connected to, to what's happening here at the, the main campus as they say in Fall River. Um, how do you hope to try to address that, at least in, in terms of what's going on in Attleboro? Well, we're trying to form a lot of connections with Fall River branches. So what we're doing is on Tuesday, we have um, a GSA meeting, and we're having representatives from the Fall River GSA come down. So hopefully we're going to set up some networking there so students who possibly live in Seekonk or some intermediary place between Attleboro and Fall River can decide which meetings they want to attend mm -hmm. and just you know go to a general connectivity between the campuses. We're also having, a, um, I believe I mentioned this earlier, holiday party, which we're inviting students from all the campuses to. And we're trying to bring awareness that the Attleboro campus is a lar a lar one of the larger satellites. Mm -hmm. We have about 1,000 students. And um, we're just really trying to form bonds with um, more of the student engagement activities within Fall River. That way we can um, basically network with them and gain the publicity off of Fall River, as well as bringing our own campus into the spotlight. Now, Nicole, the, um, 
the student senate meetings are open to any student or anyone on campus, right? They can yeah. go to, when, when are they held and where are they held? Um, well, right now they're being held, well, they're every Monday from 2 to 2, um, two to 3.30. Um, as of right now, they're being held in um, H214. Um, we usually meet in G222, but with the elevator out of commission, mm -hmm. um, we're held in H building. Um, most of the meetings will be held there until the elevators are fixed. Right. And uh, there's some issues with that elevator in G building, and hopefully that'll be fixed. Because can't get upstairs. Because they can't yeah. get upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> that'll yeah. be fixed soon. Well, I want to wish you all the best. And uh, if you're a student at BCC and you have any questions, um, you can find out more about the Student Senate. You have a Facebook page you mentioned, right? Yes. Yep. And what is yeah. it, BCC Student Senate, Bristol Community College yep. Student Senate? Just put into the search bar, uh, BCC Student Senate, it'll pop right up. And you'll find it. Well, all the best. I appreciate your time, and good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. We'll have more of Around BCC right after this. Hello, my name is Wayne Wood, Director of Public Safety here at Bristol Community College. Bristol Community College, Fall Rivers Campus, shares Ellsbury Street with two area high schools, Bishop Conley High School and BMC Durfee High School. If the college is closed due to weather or for some other reason, it is likely both high schools are going to close at the same time. With approximately 300 students leaving Bishop Conley and over 2,000 students leaving Durfee, our students and staff often find it very difficult to get off campus. We put together this video to give you alternative ways to leave campus without getting caught in traffic jams, especially at the intersection of President Avenue and Ellsbury Street. We want you to arrive at your destination with minimum delays, but most of all, to arrive safely. The majority of our students and staff only know one way to get home from here, and that is to take a left out of the campus onto Ellsbury Street. As an alternative, take a right onto Ellsbury Street. At the end of Ellsbury, you'll bear left, which will put you on Valentine Street. At the third stop sign, you will intersect with Robeson Street. Anyone living in Fall River can take any direction from Robeson Street to reach their primary destination. If New Bedford, Providence, Taunton, or Newport is your desired destination, then take a right onto Robeson Street and head north. Robeson Street will turn into Highland Avenue. At the end of Highland Avenue is a set of lights. This is the intersection of Highland Avenue and Wilson Road. Continue straight through this intersection and the road merges onto Route 24 North. If Taunton or Points North is your destination, just continue north on Route 24. For those of you heading to Providence or New Bedford area, you will want to head south on Route 24. To do this, take your first exit off Route 24 North, which is Exit 8 Airport Road. Take a left at the lights and follow the road to the rotary. Take your first right off the rotary, which puts you onto 24 South. Route 24 South will bring you to Interstate 195 East or West. East will take you to the New Bedford area, and West will take you to the Providence area. Will you please do me a favor? Someday on a good day or when you have time, try taking this alternate route and see for yourself that you do have options when you leave our campus. Thank you very much, and remember, your goal is to arrive home safely. Welcome back. As we mentioned, the spring semester is set to start later this month, and with that come plenty of opportunities for students to take some unique courses at the college. Some of these options were a part of a special course fair held at the Fall River campus last fall. There are a good number of courses offered by Bristol Community College each spring which may be of interest to students but not commonly offered at other times of the year. For the last few years, the college has held a course fair in Fall River as a way to promote these unique opportunities. Organizer Chris Ann Souza says during the advisement period in the fall, Faculty cannot always gauge the interests of their students outside of their major, and the fair is a way to pique their curiosity. This is an opportunity for students to find out about things that, you know, maybe someone doesn't necessarily think to mention, and here it is. For example, um, a lot of students are not aware that we have film, and a lot of students like film and take it once they find out it's available. And, you know, it's another way for a student to be involved, to have, you know, have some direction um, in what they're doing and a lot of times faculty are here too or run, people who run the program so it's also a way for kids to put a face on some of these potential classes um, you know to see how they feel about it. One of the programs on display at the fair was the organic farming program. 
Coordinator James Corvin says the course fair supplements the work he currently does in promoting his program. We have a flyer that we send out, a card uh, flyer, flyer that goes out, but we uh, put up announcements on a number of websites, CMAP website and the Northeast Organic Farmers Association helps us promote it, uh, the edible magazines for Edible South Shore. Uh, a number of other magazines uh, carry ads and we have press releases that go out from our own communications department and uh, we go to meetings, we go to talks, there was a, a workshops this last weekend, we had two students there who were uh, talking about our program. Uh, we go to all kinds of opportunities where we can make contact with the people and talk to them about what we're doing and have displays similar to what we've got right here. Sousa says academic departments like the course fair because it provides students with more information on courses not found in any official college publication. A lot of departments, whether it's humanities or other, will offer like a 200 level, a specialized 260 topic or what have you, and they're not necessarily listed in the catalog, just the idea that there's a special topic is in the catalog. So if you want to find out what that is, the course fair is a great place because absolutely a lot of people, for example, we have short story writing and we have um, grammar, advanced grammar right here, as well as some other special topics, the Holocaust, that are not necessarily always in the catalog. So it's, this is an opportunity for kids to see again specifically what's being offered this semester. Even though the semester begins on January 25th, there's still plenty of time for students to register for these or other courses at all BCC locations. Time now to look at the success of another BCC graduate with our Alumni in Your Community segment. Hi, my name is Diane Sylvia. I'm a graduate of BCC, class of 1986, in nursing. I grew up in the South Coast area uh, in the northern part of New Bedford. I went all my life to Catholic schools. Um, I should say prior to starting school, though, I did uh, live a couple of uh, years in Quebec City. So uh, that was my first language was French. So I learned how to speak English when I was a child. Um, but after that, I, I lived most of my life in New Bedford. Um, and I went to St. Anthony's Grammar School, high school, and um, then I went to a Florida Diploma School of Nursing uh, after my high school years. I attended that diploma school for two years, and um, I ended up with a significant knee problem, which caused me to have to take a siesta for a little bit. And when I went to go back, they were closing the school, so I could not complete my uh, diploma school nursing as a registered nurse at that point. I took my license as an LPN and worked at St. Luke's Hospital uh, for about 10, 11 years. And then um, BCC was opening up their night program being a parent of two children, single parent of two children, I um, had to find some other way to go to school. So having a night program was perfect. Most of the people in the night program were more adult learners. And um, so it was, it was really a good surrounding. Um, some of the people I knew from the past, or I had worked with in the past. So, you know, we, we supported each other. We were more like a team. But the instructors were excellent. Um, some of the instructors I had known from working with them at the hospital when they were, came in with students, but um, they were very supportive, and you need that as a single parent. You need, you know, uh, uh, people who are supportive and understanding that um, you have a situation that is not as flexible as you want it to be. But uh, I did get through it, and, and I did very well, and uh, it's, you know, it's really helped me as a start to my move forward uh, in, in education as well as uh, health care. After BCC, I started um, once again part-time going to UMass Dartmouth. At that time it was SMU. And um, I clipped programs. So BCC's foundation in nursing was excellent that I could clip many credits into the um, the, bachelor, the baccalaureate program in nursing at um, SMU. And once again, it, it changed over to UMass uh, Dartmouth now. So it was near home and that, you know, that did help as well. From St. Luke's after 23 years, um, 
there was a lot of uh, you know instability at the hospitals. They were right sizing, if you want to think downsizing, right size, right sizing. So there had been several um, cuts in the hospital over the years, and so um, I had the opportunity to move on. I was um, given an opportunity to go to an insurance company. And in that insurance company, I would be doing medical case management for workers' comp. And that in particular insurance company, which was Travelers, uh, was in Middleborough. And um, from there, I was offered a position by one of the supervisors who had moved on into a place where I had worked with my partner here um, in Newton. I wasn't too fond about going to Newton, but I loved it there. It was a great place. And then, once again, a person brought me on to another place. I went to work for Harvard per Pilgrim. So basically, I think I've only in interviewed for one job in my lifetime, <laughs> which is bizarre, because I kept on being brought on you know, by people that knew me and asked me, just like this position, Mike, my... Uh, my uh, partner ended up bringing me here. Best Doctors, uh, the corporate company does, um, we, our goal is to improve quality of care. And basically, we, they do that by interconsultations. It's an international firm. And um, they do interconsultations throughout the world. And basically, what they try to do is uh, connect people um, who have been given a diagnosis or want to find a doctor that's appropriate uh, for their particular condition will call us. And my particular facet of this is I work in New England specifically with um, insurance companies that do workers' compensation. I still, are, I still am in the workers' comp field. I'm a director of clinical operations. I have nurses in different states that work um, to they do a form of patient advocacy for the injured workers for the cities and towns of New Hampshire, cities and towns of Massachusetts, as well as the Associated Industries of Massachusetts. So I have two children, they're both in their 30s now, and I have six grandchildren, and they're up there. <laughs> but um, both my children um, have, um, they're, they're well accomplished. Uh, my son does HVAC. My daughter, well, she's a stay-at-home mom now, but she did work for the phone company for years. And um, they, um, you know, the, their value is, is that you have to work hard. You have to work hard to get where you're going. And education is very much a part of that. And um, my son, once again, studied HVAC. My daughter did go to BCC in clinical lab sciences. So, you know, it's really important that education, you know, regardless, many things come and go, but your education always stays with you, no matter what. It will follow you throughout your lifetime. Time to shift to the courts as another intercollegiate basketball season is among us. And along with the new season comes a new head of BCC Athletics. It's year three for intercollegiate basketball for the men's and ladies bees. At the semester break, the men's squad is five and five off the heels of a postseason berth last year. The Lady Bees are 1-8 and eight to begin 2011 and are led by first-year head coach Terrence Smith. He came on board just before the beginning of the season and inherits a freshman-laden club. He says the expectations for this season are to take steps toward consistent improvement. We kind of go game by game. We try and improve upon our mistakes. We see what went wrong. We try and really work on our defense a lot and uh, you know, the girls can play. They're, we got nine players out there who want to play that are really tough. And, you know, we're, we're just trying to focus, go game by game. Just really try and win tomorrow. That's our big thing. Being the third woman's coach in three seasons puts an added challenge on the program to grow going forward. Smith feels there is ample opportunity for the Lady Bees to become a competitive program. I feel like there's a lot of players. I feel like basketball is just such a huge part of Massachusetts. It, all of Massachusetts, here in the South Shore, Western Mass, you know, Boston area where I'm from, it seems like it's just, well, obviously the birthplace of, boss, of basketball, so uh, I don't know, I just really feel like there's a lot of talent that's coming up through the high schools and, uh, you know, we're trying to get as much of it as possible here at uh, BCC. BCC also has a new athletic director in Derek Viveros. Viveros takes the helm of the athletic program after spending the last few years coaching college baseball. The Fall River native is acutely aware of the level of athletic talent in the South Coast 
and how BCC can benefit from it. I think the, the quality of education is, is well known uh, to, you know, to high school students in the area. I think our biggest hurdle is being a new athletic program um, and maybe the, um, the image of what, what these high school kids are thinking. Um, maybe it's not as competitive as what they, they're looking for. It's kind of maybe what they're, they're thinking there. And I think once, once we start competing and showing that we, we are at, at playing at a national level, in the junior college level, um, you know, I think we can get over that hurdle and we'll be um, one of the top choices for, for kids in this area. In the short term, Viveris is looking to shore up the soccer and basketball programs while exploring possible expansion down the road. Many BCC students will be beginning their final semester at the college this month with graduation right around the corner. Many students are planning to continue their education at a four-year institution, and BCC helps them along the way by making the connection between the two. Each fall, BCC hosts a college transfer fair to give students a one-stop shop where they can explore their educational options after they graduate. This year, 58 colleges took part in the fair. Director of Transfer Services Eileen Shea says technology has helped students find out about colleges, but personal contact is equally important. Often our students can get their information online and they have access to the information online, but it makes a big difference when they have a chance to actually chat with one of the representatives, someone who's actually going to be looking at their application to determine if they're going to be accepted to the four-year school. One of the colleges at the fair was Fitchburg State University. Assistant Director of Admissions Shani Smith says students approach her with the same questions. What's your most popular program? Do you have nursing? Um, you know, uh, how hard is it to get in? What's your GPA? Those are the basic questions we get a lot from transfer students. Um, and what's important for students to realize is that we all have some similar programs between the state universities, but some of us have more competitive programs. Fitchburg is known for communications media and for nursing specifically. And so we do have some different admission standards as a result for certain programs. But otherwise than that, uh, we look at the general state admission standards. If you have a, a 2.0, you need 24 or more credits. If you have uh, 2.5, it's usually uh, 12 to 23 credits. So it's pretty black and white, but you know some programs are harder than others. Smith says colleges like Fitchburg State have an advantage working closely with Massachusetts community colleges like BCC. We have these relationships with the community colleges that are, are vital to the state of Massachusetts and the public higher education system. Uh, we come here so that people can learn that Fitchburg, uh, first of all, where it is, they always ask us that question, and, and second of all, the programs that we have to offer. There's a lot of similar programs. We have the joint admissions and the mass transfer programs too, which are in essence uh, created so that students can leave Bristol and easily transition to a university like Fitchburg State. So it's very important that we come down here and we can explain all that in a little bit more detail face to face. Shea says helping a student find a college after BCC goes beyond just connecting the student with a school. We have lots of services available for transfer students. We work with them individually. They have the opportunity to make an appointment with us. We sit down with them, we talk with them about their application, the kinds of things that they should be putting together for a transfer portfolio, what kinds of things are important in addition to, of course, their grades and, and how well they do here. Colleges that are closer geographically to BCC will often come back multiple times a year to outreach to the BCC students. That's all for Around BCC this month. We leave you today with a portion of the One Book Project final presentation held last month in Fall River. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.